the J, the I, the M, the M, the Y, the J, the I, the M is Jimmy. It's Jimmy. Uh, hey, Jim, how you doing? Eddie's calling. Hey, Eddie, how's it going? Thanks for taking time to give me a call and reach out. Absolutely, my friend. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Yeah, early start in L.A. You know how it goes. Are you in Nashville today? Yeah, yeah. It's, um, a little early, but approaching midday. There you go. I like that. Snowing yet out there? Cool weather, or how's it going out there? Uh, it was about uh, 30 degrees this morning, but it'll warm up to uh, 60 degrees. No, that's pretty nice. I'm heading back yeah, to Chicago. Right. So I uh, I'm getting I'm gearing up for the cold for the holidays heading back home. Oh yeah? Yep. That's where you from? Yeah. Wow. wow. <laughs> Love the Midwest. Man, you know, it's I used to do my grad work in uh, Chicago. I went to um Kellogg. Oh yeah. Yeah. Northwestern, yeah. right? Yep, Northwestern. Mm -hmm. And I tell you what, man, those winters you know, look like it's uh a 60 degree day outside and as you know when you walk outside it's razor blades flying everywhere it's beyond cold <laughs> well, well did you ever have a december game in soldier field that's another thing too <laughs> well i've never played there in the, in, the, in the winter thank god well you lucked out in that case <laughs> yeah it's just no joke though no joke. No question. Well, you know what? Looking back at it, we just mentioned Fuma, but man, you've you've really created yourself a heck of a acting run. You know, it's like I look back. It's like I, I think you start your first movie was with Steven Seagal. Um, I believe it was in the early two thousands, right? I remember that movie. Uh -huh. uh, and you know, looking back, almost over a decade later, more than a decade, and, and you're you've turned into a really solid working actor. You know, Eddie, and tell me kind of how that uh, approach after your playing days, how did you kind of decide to, to get into acting and, and to the point now that, you know, you, you've been at it for a while? Um, well, in short, um, I wanted to work on the craft of becoming a better actor. Um, they're really a better communicator in terms of telling stories. Um, I've learned that whether you're an actor or you're a salesperson, or you're an entrepreneur or a doctor, you're selling yourself, you're selling something um, to somebody in terms of trying to motivate them to point of action, uh, have them think, uh, think have, uh, collect a, a, a thought in terms of a thought-provoking topic, uh, get them to move in some capacity or motivate them to do something. Um, and that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to become a better storyteller and communicator and do that. I took acting classes in theater. Um, mm -hmm. Tough as training ground for an actor to go through. And um, I just fell in love with the art of storytelling in a nutshell. And uh, I continue to seek to get better at it. And I've, I've always, to uh, when I first started, it was just to gain confidence and being comfortable in my skin and comfortable to tell my story um, in front of an audience. Uh, and... Uh, the training was tremendous, and I continue to do it today. Mm -hmm. So it's like you kind of applied, it seems like, the athlete mentality, putting in the work. Like It's easy kind of to, when you, you were seen on TV and whatnot, to, to take that road and try to use that as leverage. But, you know, the respectable thing here is that you really applied yourself to the craft and you actually studied it and, and went that route to start a new profession in so many ways. Yeah, um... Yeah, I had to respect the craft because I was getting some opportunities in California and Hollywood to audition for pieces, and I didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel confident in what I was doing, and I just didn't want to get in um, my experience and develop bad habits. I wanted to really appreciate the art of acting and appreciate it from a point of, of a truthfulness and authenticity. And... My goal was to, um, it, you never reach a point where if I made it, I feel all comfortable. You're always searching for um, different ways to tell a story. Uh, but I, I can I've just continue to just hone my craft. And I, I've dedicated my life to doing that, you know, after I finished playing the game of football. Cause, because, again, it, it helps me become a well-rounded person. Um, in terms of telling, talking to my son, my family, in terms of leadership, uh, storytelling is a big part of 
of who we are as people and how you get things across and how you motivate. So uh, it was very important for me to understand the the nuances of that, the details of that, and in terms of how to use your voice, how to um, use your range of your voice, uh, use the, the power of, uh, of, of of the pause. I mean, just the, the just the t- different techniques, but it's all all powered by the truth and telling the truth um, and being honest with that. So the more I can get to the core of that, of who I am as a man and a person and and be able to uh, unlock and unleash uh, the vulnerable side of me in, in those circumstances, um, then hopefully I can continue to get opportunities as an actor. Mm-hmm. No, and I, I feel you have for for all these years. You know, this is an industry that's tough to to last a couple years. So to to go over you know a decade and still be doing various roles as you've done and, and films and shows that says something that you keep on staying power at it. You know, and it's just like it, it seems now that you've been at this almost uh, longer than than your football, um, the, the NFL career. Yeah. You know, it's crazy to think in that way, uh, that you've done it for a while. Tell me about this film, Another Version of You. How'd you get involved in it? I, I talked to CJ and Miro yesterday, and they're also based in Nashville, obviously. They're with the WWE and all, but um, seemed kind of like a local, natural connection anyway. What was the connection there? Oh, man. You know, it was a, a definitely a local connection. They knew about my, my uh, interest in acting. Because um, we filmed it about three years ago, oh, wow. um, and uh, one of the actors um, uh, who plays Dixie, he mm-hmm. was in my acting troupe for a while. We worked together on a couple different things, a um, couple workshops here and there, and um, they heard about my 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 background in terms of Shakespeare and the community theater, and figured that I could have a small role in this film, and uh, they asked me to come on board. It, of course, you know, any independent film doesn't pay a whole bunch of money, but uh, this the story is it was just really resonated with me and uh, the beauty of it. It's it's a sci fi rom com type of film, um, but it's just layered with so many um, uh, different types of, uh, of storylines and, mm-hmm. and messages and. Um, just the key of, of how wow you know I, I possess this key that's that's the whole idea behind it to unlock you know the better version of you and I think when you try to look at that in, in a real life perspective the parallel is that we're all trying to become better versions of ourselves and and find true love and try to find our purpose in life and so forth so that's what really stood out to me about it and uh, when I saw the film for the first time, I was just so proud to be a part of the project. Like, man, this is a really well done, thought out film, and it was awesome. That's the thing too about it. I, I thought it was an interesting concept for sure, no question about it, because it, it makes you think, right? It, movies that make you kind of think and put yourself in that place. Like, what would you do if you were in that situation, or how would you change yourself, or how would you redo a, you know, an opportunity if you had to do over again as a person? How, how many different choices and paths we have in life, and if, if we could kind of go back in a sense, or, or have different. You know, connection, and it's about connections. You you mentioned communication, connections, and how we make connections in everyday life too. We sometimes we don't even notice it, and this is kind of a realization of that stuff. No question. I mean, you know, the story is filled with comedy, uh, heartbreak, adventure. Um, you have a you have a chance to see various sides of a different person. You think back, man. You know, people ask me if you were to write a letter to your younger self, what would you write? And I would just write one simple thing, trust God and keep living. Mm. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. because you know, we don't have, you know, we're not going to live quote perfect lives. We learn through our failures. We learn through our mistakes. We learn through hard work. We learn through breaking somebody's heart. We learn through uh, deceiving somebody. We learn through being deceived. All those things are learning lessons to move to the better version of who you are. So I've never been one to say if I can go back in time and change anything. If I change one thing, if I go back and change something where a failure that I had, let's say I had two fumbles uh, against a certain team, and let's say I had tremendous success, you know, I might not have won the Heisman. Because that very moment when I had that failure and the pain that I felt, I never wanted to feel that again. Mm -hmm. The energy I need to to help me get up at 6 o'clock in the morning for the next two years, not knowing if I was going to 
uh, play again. It stressed my faith. I mean, so all of those things made a difference. And I think in, in showing this film, it's like, well, you know, you why search for this, try to search for this one person or this one perfect scenario when you have to live life? You know, it's it's just really, it really is thought provoking, and that's what that's what really resonated with me about the whole film. It's, it's interesting you mentioned that in that way too. And when you look at these aspects. You know, in order to be a good actor, in a sense, I always felt that you need to live life. You need to have life experiences. Because a lot of people sometimes, you know, I've done acting too out in L.A. And they ask, well, what's your passion? When people are just like, oh, I love acting and acting is this. But in order to be a well-rounded person and actor and performer, you need to have life experiences, real life experiences. And that, that includes pain and, and happiness and sorrow so you understand what it is, you know? And without failure, you can't succeed really in life because you, you learn from it and that's a teaching lesson. It makes you stop and, and, and pay attention, I feel like, when things don't go right. That is, applies to sports, as you mentioned too. So it's an interesting kind of life message in so many ways no question no question about it mm -hmm. uh, what sort of roles are you attracted to you mentioned the stories are important to you and reading and something that makes you think which is really a good approach to take this script but what sort of roles are you attracted to and you'd like to do that maybe you haven't had a chance to do roles that scare me roles that take me out of my comfort zone mm -hmm. um Things that'll, like, for example, I've done Chicago the Musical. I'm not a natural singer. So to develop a singing voice and to tell the story through a musical was a challenge to me. Um, moving forward, uh, Shakespeare, I want to delve back into Shakespeare roles like um, Richard III, you know, to take this monster of a man, you know, um, who has a, an element, who has... Um, evil uh, desires to put that on its ear and to show and to justify his behavior and to show that he is a, a, a beautiful human being who's misunderstood is intriguing to me. Mm -hmm. uh, those type of roles uh, really um, speak to me in terms of what I would love to. Of course, um, I think any action hero or James Bond, that that's you know, in terms of box office and having a chance to have Jennifer Lopez as your love interest. <laughs> That's right. Have to work with her for 13 weeks and have to be forced to be intimate with her or, you know, that, that, that's exciting. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm We're all dreaming here. <laughs> We're all dreaming. But, yeah. uh, but for the most part, um, I'm just interested in telling stories that are going to inspire, enlighten, um, uh, bring a light to uh, a really jolt an audience of, wow, here's another perspective uh, that we never considered or, or had a chance to look through the lens of, of, a, of a certain uh, class of people or mm -hmm. um, one specific person. Because, you know, as you know, as you write, um, you have a chance, there's your story, but then you have to write the story, your own story from the version how other people perceive you from their perspective. And it's quite different, and it's interesting when you do that. So um, those type of stories, those type of roles, that, that's what I'm interested in doing. I'm, I'm really a kind of, uh, well, no, I'm a, I'm a spiritual person, so I, I, I just go where I'm led in terms of what the spirit needs me to be to tell a specific story. Mm -hmm. you, you feel the spirituality that you've had that's really guided you in, in life to not only to make life choices, but to kind of bring you to the place you are? No question. If I try to do it on my own, I, I'd mess it up. And I, and I have. And I stepped out of that, that, that stream of grace, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, I, I spend a lot of time praying and meditating and listening to where I'm supposed to go next. And what I'm supposed to do, and how I'm how I'm just uh, conduit for a bigger message, a bigger plan, and it doesn't stop. And I, and I get blessed because of that. And I think most people get it misconstrued that the blessing is you, but the blessings come through you to bless others, mm -hmm. and 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 even through your failures, through your successes, through your story, through your testimony, it's how God is using you to show that hey, you know what. 
by by the grace of God, I'm here. By the grace that I'm able to have made it through a lot of different of these things. So, yeah, I think in part, you know, most people um, rely on their will and and just their intellectual um, capital, and that's great, and you'll accomplish a lot. But you'll just be exhausted, and you won't appreciate it as much at the end of the day. But when you incorporate, allow God in, in all of the mix, and, and allow Him to to guide you along with your intellectual capital and your emotional being, um, you're able to get places with more efficiency, with more grace. And when things go awry and things don't go right, you won't be as exhausted in the moment. You won't be in fear of you'll just look at it from a different perspective and say hey this is a learning lesson and this is a part of the process versus something that's going to stress you up because everything is about stress man yes and in managing stress stresses efficiently um and you learn to look at it through a different lens and to find some humor in it and to find blessing in um uh, then you're able to grow from it Mm -hmm. It's one of those things where everything happens for a reason, uh, and I kind of started realizing that in your own life, that you know you learn sometimes you want things that aren't given to you or it's not your right time. You know, it's the patience in life too. You, you got to be patient in life, and um, and it's, sometimes it's difficult when you see others succeeding or doing certain things, but there's a plan for you. You know, eventually you're doing something because you're supposed to go on a certain path in life that that's your guided to, and once you realize that i think it changes your life in so many ways no question you know yet just yesterday I, I was i read something in scripture and it just dawned on me that you know waiting waiting is a part of the process mm -hmm. you know, being still is a part of the process we think that if we work 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 we want to see the benefits we should see that outcome right now but sometimes in that waiting period between shows, between different projects, between different parts that you may get, is the most important part. That's when the work is being done in you, in terms of preparing you for that role or that next thing. It's the work that you have to put in, in terms of your faith, in terms of working on your craft, when it doesn't look like nothing's gonna happen, and continuing to go to your acting classes, continuing to be a student of life, continuing to write, doing all the things to sharpen your skill set so when that you're at that door of opportunity, you walk through it with confidence. And if you even if you haven't done the work, you walk through it and you're like, oh shit, I, I'm not ready. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's why it's important, important to understand that you have to embrace those periods and those times of when there's stillness. And, and you're in that waiting period. You've got to develop and sharpen your skills. I guess you did. You ever think about getting back into the into the football world as a commentator, coach, anything like that? Has that ever been an option for you, or, or something you'd like to do? You no, know, I haven't been moved in that capacity. Mm -hmm. um, right now, the way I, I do engage myself uh, with with players, it's on the life uh, side of it, which is so important. Yeah, oh. No question. You know, I, 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 my, my ministry or my, my coaching days are, are done off the field, if you will, um, just about managing life. And one way that uh, I've been able to try to monetize that is through my wealth management business. Mm -hmm. When I'm not on stage, I, um, I'm developing business um, through wealth management and managing uh, the lives of, of football players uh, through finance and having an opportunity to minister to them um, about what to expect when you walk into the business, during the business, and most definitely transitioning after the business. So it will be a smoother ride. You have a, a better sense of a game plan than just being thrown to the wolves and saying, hey, thank you for your service. Here's your pension. Here's your annuity if you saved it. And here's the money that you accumulate over time and there's life. You know, well, my, my goal is to say, hey, you know, let's take your platform and every whatever, how, however it's dressed up. If it's dressed with a gold jacket or the bust and a Heisman Trophy, there's some there's value there. If it's just dressed with um, your football playing days and ambition, that it's still a platform, but you can do something with that. So um, that's been kind of my my life's mission now is to help 
um, athletes from all walks of uh, life to uh, find their next passion and to bless them with opportunities um, as they bridge the gap from athletics to their their next role in life. And that's so important. You go because as an athlete yourself, you start at such a young age, and you kind of know that all your life until. But but these careers are short. You you still have a whole life ahead. You know, at retiring in your mid thirties, like that's that's not even close to retirement age for people in regular walk of life. And there's a whole different life. Like you even mentioned, you've almost done acting longer than now at the NFL. You know, in that sense. So it's like that life to prepare you after sports. It's huge because you grow as an individual and as a person after the game too and that's so important you know to to recognize that that there's another life left ahead i think it's great that you're doing that thank you my man i appreciate it well, i wanted to also ask you about kind of infamous uh, the super bowl game it, it's such a big part of uh, the nfl history and lore and you know every time you go to the rams game you see that play uh, kevin extending his hand how have over the years how has that become for you how do you view that experience that it, it kind of became it, it grew a life of its own it's a game that's really remembered beyond just a regular super bowl yeah and that's the fact that you can remember that game and was what uh god uh 20 years ago mm-hmm. um it's remarkable it was a beautiful experience it was a beautiful wonderful experience and Although we lost, I feel like I've won mm-hmm. because I can now I can understand the beauty and triumph and disaster and having the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. You know, getting there, just the ride of getting there and being in a position to to almost win a Super Bowl only to fall yards short of that. Um, and people still remember the, how we fought, and they remember the grit, the grit, the grind, and how we got there. Um, it's, it truly is uh, overwhelming, mm-hmm. and I can take a lot of those that energy and a lot of the feelings that um, that I had from that point, and filter that in the various roles that I play in my life, on stage, off stage, in front of the camera. So I have sense memory from what it was like to feel that, that crushing blow, you know? So I can use that as, as a tool in my acting. And um, so for me personally, it's been a blessing. Uh, and, I, and, and you know, although I didn't, I'm not a Super Bowl champion, um, I, can, I don't have the reins to prove that. I still feel in my heart that one day I will have an opportunity to hoist up a a Lombardi trophy, whether it be through my son's management, who knows? I have no idea. Mm-hmm. Owner, but that that still is a lingering um, goal that I have in my mind. Or maybe in the in a, in a different sense that I, I could win some other award or, or uh, see another uh, answered prayer in that regard. So um, it, it is always hope for me that that, that yard is, is still left undone, but it will be finished one day. Do you watch the game? Do you follow the NFL? Any favorite players or, that you, you kind of pay attention to, especially at the running back position? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm always watching the position. Right now, Eric Henry is having a you know, career. So underrated. That's the underrated, not appreciated, uh, in my opinion. Uh, kid is third in the NFL rushing. Uh, over the last 16 games, he rushed for over uh, 1,700 yards, 18 touchdowns, uh, leads the league in, in rushing from that time period for going back to last season. Been the most consistent piece in the Titans offense this uh, the entire year. And as the quarterback position gets better and the receivers get better, this game gets better. And uh, Derek, to me, is a fine young man. I think he's just scratching the surface on what he can accomplish in this league. Mm-hmm. No question. I, I'm glad you kind of noted him because he's one of those guys, you know, maybe doesn't have the glitz and glamour to him, but he's a bruiser and, and a really tough, hard-nosed player. Uh, and uh, I'm glad that, you know, he's having success and, and finally Titans are winning and, and it's being kind of noticed finally. Uh, and I feel like he's been doing that for years, too. Mm-hmm. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. So I think the best is yet to come for the Titans. Uh, any Super Bowl kind of predictions? Any teams you're really looking out for and, and seeing? I mean, it's pretty wide open this year, especially uh, the NFC. Um, it, it's an interesting year in the league. It is. In San Francisco and Baltimore, they teed off last weekend. Uh, it appears that Baltimore has the lead in the AFC. 
But don't be surprised to see the uh, New England Patriots come out of that side of the bracket. They always find a way. Totally. Although I don't want to see that happen, I don't want to see it. But um, Seattle, to me, might be the team out of the NFC uh, because of Russell Wilson. Russell's another guy that's not really appreciated. We're, we're enamored with uh, Deshaun Watts, his playmaking ability, both inside the pocket, outside the pocket, throwing it. He's like a magician. Uh, Lamar Jackson just been like um, the next Michael Vick. Mm-hmm. But in terms of uh, the quintessential leader and what you're looking for in a Super Bowl caliber quarterback and who has transcended his game, has elevated his game, has been Russell Wilson. And, and who's won a Super Bowl, too, and has been doing all those yeah. things before for years, too. Another underappreciated yeah. guy. Yeah, yep. the experience. Yes. No one's really talking about Seattle. And I think uh, the Seahawks, they have a chance to up in the to win their side of the division. Everybody's talking about San Francisco, but the Seahawks, they have they hold a tiebreaker over mm-hmm. the Niners. So I, I can see a Seahawks, um, New England, Patriots, or Baltimore uh match up in the Super Bowl. Very, very good point. And um, kind of winding down, so what, what are some things you like to do? I mean, obviously you're very involved. You seem to have a lot going on in your life, aside from the acting and the mentoring and spirituality that, that you apply to your everyday life. What are some things you like to enjoy or, or hobbies that you do on a day-to-day basis to, to kind of to ground you in a sense and keep you going? Um, yeah. Well, um, I DJ. Um, that's a big part of my life. Very nice. For... Godly, since I've been 27 years old, so almost 20 years. <laughs> wow, <laughs> crazy! Yeah, so I've been doing that for forever. Um, I love music. Um, uh, music is just a way for me to de- decompress, break away from the real world for a while, and 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 the, the Windex and the, mm-hmm. the incense. I mean, this brings me back to. You know, my, my growing up days and, and uh, just playing music, you know, just really takes me down memory lane. And Any specific music? It allows me to be appreciative. Say it again? Any specific music that, that really gets you in well, tune with I, that? I'm a 90s, I'm a 90s hip-hop guy. There you know, That's go. my core. You know, that's where I like to live with Wu-Tang and Nas. I mean, that was the golden era of hip-hop. I agree. You know, ranging from coast to coast. You know, it wasn't just East Coast heavy. It was down south with Outkast. It was Scarface and uh, Ghetto Boys. It was um, uh, Bun B and, and Pimp C. Mm-hmm. You know, out west and Dr. Dre and uh, N.W.A. So, so hip hop, you know, for nationally speaking, was at an all time high in that era. So you can pick and choose from any any type of style that you wanted and really enjoy it. So that's kind of where I like digging in the crates with, with that music. But I'm also up to speed with and appreciate, you know, where hip-hop is today and that, that the millennials are in it. There you go. Well, that's you're a well-rounded individual, and, and I, I really appreciate that. You know that that you know because it's easy to be kind of viewed as an athlete or a football player, especially with your accomplishments. But you've really made a lot of your life and, and contributed to different portions and interests and, and helping people. And there's really something to be said for that to to making something of your life and like you said, serving others and kind of packing others along the way. And that that's really important. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And finally, any holiday plans for you? Anything that you got going on or doing? Well, I'm doing um, cigars, conversations, and cocktails with uh, the great Earl Campbell here in Tennessee. Oh, Next fantastic. Um, it's, uh, the proceeds are going to go toward um, community foundation, um, community foundation I've set up, um, and it's going to go to various foundations throughout uh, the Tennessee area. And uh, that's one thing that I'm, I'm looking forward to. But really, man, this is the time of year to really be thankful for what we have, to acknowledge uh, Jesus Christ um, as the gift and uh, gracious, uh, graciousness, his, his loving kindness, and the kindness uh, of his heart to, to allow us to live the lives that we're living to be impactful, man. So, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I'm going to use this time to really decompress and enjoy my family, enjoy my loved ones. 
watch a ton of football, eat a lot of food, and get great gifts. <laughs> there you go. No, it, you just said in perspective, enjoy family. My mother just got diagnosed with breast cancer a couple weeks ago. I think this is going to be a really special holiday, me going back there to Chicago. You know, it really puts in perspective the family portion of it and, and being kind of with your loved ones and what this, what the holidays are all about. So it finally rings true. You know, you kind of, when, when you're faced with some adversity and whatnot, you really, it brings you together and closer. And, and I feel that... Yeah. Um, that family aspect, it's what it's really about uh, in the end of the day. Yeah, I, I think this is the time to appreciate, for sure. Yeah, how old's your mom, man? Uh, she's 57. Uh, she, yeah, they, you know, it, it's it's interesting because, you know, NFL is, you know, speaks a lot about breast cancer awareness in October and that being the month, too. And uh, she went just for a routine screening and, uh, you know, could have easily not gone i feel it was almost a, in a sense a blessing because someone had canceled an appointment and she was like well i'm just gonna go and did it find something so hopefully we're, we're all hoping that it's it's very early stage and, and we can get through it and, and curable but but life yeah throws interesting things your way and in a sense i mean i'm super close to my family it's a small family but me my mother and my sister but you know in, in a way like you mentioned kind of in a sense it could have been a blessing too that, that she had that opportunity to go get checked early before anything really, really escalated. Yeah, yeah, man. Well, I'll be praying for it, brother. Thank you, Eddie. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for All taking right, the man. time to talk to me. I uh, really appreciate you sharing uh, your stories and really inspiring along the way, too. Uh, I really appreciate what you've done, and thank you for taking the time. Not a problem, brother. You have a blessed day, man. You too. Thank you so much. Hope we come across again. Sounds good. Bye-bye, Eddie.